let's start today's uh, lecture by summary of what we have done till now okay and we'll um, after the summary we'll take up some uh, new things today so let's go to this place okay so here um, let's summarize summary so we have started these lectures by writing down first the d'alembert principle okay and that was m i r i double dot minus the forces forces other than the constant forces times the virtual displacements that are consistent with the constraints okay that's what d'alembert principle is and then we went on to introduce generalized coordinates and the reason was to transform this part into generalized coordinates independent generalized coordinates so i could um, equate the coefficient of dq alphas to zero okay so i introduced generalized coordinates Q of Qs, okay. So the set is Q three n minus k. Okay, that's good. Then we derived Euler-Lagrange equations, which are the equations of motion that describe the evolution of your system. and they were the following del l over del q alpha dot d over dt okay that's the total time derivative minus del l over del q alpha let's say all the forces are obtainable from a scalar potential so that the forces are conservative again okay, then i can write this otherwise on the right hand side you have generalized forces as well okay that is good our lagrangian is a function of generalized coordinates generalized velocities the time derivatives of q are called generalized velocities and t also Okay, let's make some observations now. Okay, so up to here, what we have done till now, and we took some examples. Okay, so point number one. Note that these um, Euler-Lagrange equations, these equations are second-order differential equations. okay so um these equations i refer i'm referring to all the lagrange equations are second order second order differential equations e q second order differential equation why are they second order let's look at here the lagrangian we wrote down last time um you remember we wrote down last time the most general form of kinetic energy function the t okay and we saw that it has a t0 t1 and t2 okay t2 is quadratic in the uh, in the generalized velocities So your Lagrangian, which is t minus u, will have uh, quadratic terms. 
then when you take a partial derivative here this this piece with respect to one of the generalized velocities okay you take the quadratic function and you take a, der a partial derivative with one of the velocities you'll be left with a uh, function which will be linear in the generalized velocity okay and then when you take the time derivative you will generate the second order uh, differential of q the second order time derivative of q and that's why these equations are second order differential equations let me maybe let me write it down here um, since the kinetic energy function t okay that is what we have been calling it is quadratic in q alpha dots okay you have you remember you have terms like q alpha dot q beta dot time a function which is a function of the q's okay this is what we discussed i think in the last video okay because of this and taking a time derivative um, uh, sorry uh, taking a partial derivative with respect to q alpha dot of t which is the part of lagrangian will 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 generate a linear term in alpha dot linear terms in terms which are linear in q alpha dot okay and then when you take the d over dt which is here you will be taking d over dt of this this guy which is nothing but q alpha double dot okay so you see that your equations of motion are second order differential equations which you already know that they should be also note a very important property here that in writing down these equations of motion the euler lagrange equations of motion these ones okay we never appealed to any special property of the generalized coordinates okay there was nothing special about the coordinates which gave us this form if instead of choosing q alpha we had chosen some other set q alpha prime we would have still gotten the same form of the lagrange equations all lagrange equations right we would still have gotten this okay which means that the form of the all lagrange equations is independent of the choice of generalized coordinates that you make okay which is uh, quite clear from our procedure we never appeal to any special property of the q's and more precise uh, let me write it down uh, maybe write down on next sheet the form of euler lagrange equations is independent pendent of the choice of generalized coordinates that's quite evident statement okay nevertheless let me write down what it um, means mathematically it means that if you had chosen instead of the q's q primes okay i'm making a shorthand notation instead of writing q1 q2 so forth i'm just writing q if we had chosen this then still you are going to get the following okay sorry del over del q alpha prime dot okay d over dt minus del l over del q alpha prime 
equal zero. That's what you would have gotten. Okay, where you know your Lagrangian is the kinetic energy minus potential energy. Take uh, L uh, in fun in terms of R and T, the Cartesian ones. Convert them to the generalized coordinates Q or the Q prime. So all these three Ls are the same, and that's what you see here. So let me put L prime here. Okay, so what I'm saying is. Your L prime, Q prime, Q prime dot T is same as L Q Q dot T, right? These are the same functions. So that's what I mean by uh, saying that the equations, the form of equations is independent of the choice of the generalized coordinates. Okay, that's uh, one important thing. Okay. Okay, let's see what I should say. Okay. Maybe to the next video, to the next slide. Okay. Now let's say you are studying some system and you have set up the Lagrangian for that system and you um, discover that not all coordinates appear in the Lagrangian. Okay. Um, those coordinates which do not appear in the Lagrangian are called cyclic coordinates or ignorable coordinates. And there is something nice uh, you can deduce if such a case arises. Okay. And that's what we want to see now. So let's um, let's write it down. So let's say you are given a Lagrangian L, and your generalized coordinates are q one, q two, s, whatever that s is, s is the degrees of freedom you have. Okay, that's what your degrees of freedom are. Now let's say Lagrangian is not a function of um, let, let me put it this way. Okay, let's say your L is not a function of one of these coordinates. Let's call that coordinate Q of alpha. So that alpha could be one or two or whatever. So let's say one of them uh, does not uh, appear in L. If that is the case, then let's see what we can say from uh, the equations of motion. So equation of motion says D over DT del L over del Q alpha dot. So I'm looking at the equation of motion corresponding to that particular alpha right now. Okay, the one which is not appearing in the Lagrangian minus del L over del Q alpha equals zero. Okay, now if Q alpha does not appear in the Lagrangian, then this partial derivative is zero. Okay, so this guy, this term is zero, which means d over dt of del L over del Q alpha dot is zero. That's nice. It's nice because it says that if you look at this quantity, del L over del Q alpha dot, okay, if you look at this guy, then that guy remains constant. You see, I'm looking at a total time derivative here, meaning as the time changes and system evolves, things are moving around, no matter what is happening, okay, this guy, del L over del Q alpha dot, that remains a constant, okay? So, let me write it down. It says del L over del Q alpha dot is a constant. It's a constant of motion. Okay, your system is evolving, things are moving around, but the value this has does not change with time. Okay, so um, let me write down 
clearly what all I have said. I have defined already a cyclic coordinate. What is a cyclic coordinate? Uh, uh, is a is a generalized coordinate coordinate that does not appear appear in the Lagrangian okay when I say the coordinate does not appear doesn't mean that the velocities cannot appear. The velocities can appear. Okay, so the the uh, statement about cyclic coordinate is only about the coordinate, not their respective velocities. Okay, so that's what I mean by a generalized coordinate. And we see that the moment there is a coordinate which is cyclic, you have a corres uh, a corresponding constant of motion. Okay, so this guy is conserved. Del L over del Q alpha dot. Okay, that looks like a little abstract right now, uh, but uh, we can reveal what this guy is if we look at our simplest example of, um, of let's say, a free particle. Okay, that's what we always do. So whenever I want to test something, I take the simplest cases. Or I, if I want to understand something uh, which is new to me, I uh, take that new thing in the context of the simplest cases I already know. So I'll take this and uh, look for a, s a single particle in which is moving freely, so there are no forces. And let's see what is the equivalent of this guy. So I take the uh, example of, okay, I would like to use green color if I'm taking an example. And I think I can do it. Okay, looks good. Okay. So a Mm. Yeah, so I take a free particle and I use Cartesian coordinates. I can use Cartesian coordinates are also a set of generalized coordinates in this case, Cartesian coordinates. Okay, I'm assuming that particle is accessing all the three dimensions. So what's the Lagrangian? Or maybe I should go to next. Okay, fine, no problem. So what's the Lagrangian? The Lagrangian in this case is, as you already know very well, half m x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square. Okay, and you see that the coordinates x, y, and z, they do not appear in the Lagrangian. The derivatives appear, the, the velocities appear, but not the, not the coordinates. So in this case, your x, y, and z are cyclic. Okay, they are cyclic coordinates or they are ignorable coordinates. Okay, which means that there has to be a constant of motion which will be del L over del Q dot where Q will be X, Y and Z, all of them, all three of them. So let's look at what del L over del X dot is. So if I look at del L, uh, let me go to the next, how do I go? Yes, mm, come on, Z, oops. So let me look at, I want to do this. I want to uh, calculate this thing for our case. So I should be looking at del L over del X dot and also del L over del Y dot because that is also a cyclic, uh, Y is also a cyclic coordinate and del L over del Z as well because Z is also a cyclic coordinate. And what are these? Your del L over del X dot is mx dot, right? Your, you have x dot square, so you take derivative, you get x 
mx dot this will be my dot and this will be mz dot and what is this this is mass times x component of the velocity right so that's the momentum in the x direction momentum in the y direction and that's the momentum in the z direction okay so you see that um, in this case of uh, a particle moving in three dimensions what is constant is the momentum all the three components of momenta are constants which you already know that the momentum is going to be uh, conserved for this particle where there are no forces okay so this um, leads us to define a new quantity what we call as generalized momenta so i will define okay let me make it black again good so i define generalized momentum or also we call it canonical momentum or conjugate momentum as well let me write conjugate conjugate momentum okay so i am defining a generalized momentum or conjugate momentum corresponding to q alpha to be here del l over del q alpha dot okay this alpha, uh, this q alpha could be any of the any of the coordinates it does not have to be a cyclic coordinate so corresponding to every q alpha i define del l over del q alpha dot to be the generalized momentum and i denote it by pf alpha okay that's good and in our example for a free particle here we have seen that the corresponding um, conjugate momenta are uh, constants um, okay they do not change change with time okay that's good let me take another example here okay now let's take um, again a particle and for simplicity i'll take it to be moving in two dimensions and it is let's say also experiencing a force on it particle in 2d i take so x y plane let's say and on which you have a force which is given by a scalar potential and this time i take the potential to depend only on y and z okay um sorry i'm saying it is moving in x y direction so let's say it is um in fact yeah why why do this so let's say i we take a particle in 3d okay and we take the uh, scalar potential to depend only on uh, y and z now if this is the case then your lagrangian does not depend on x right because it's only through the potential energy you, your x will appear which means that for this case x is a cyclic coordinate or ignorable coordinate if that is so then something has to be a constant of motion something has to be conserved and that is the corresponding momentum conjugate momentum so let's look at what the corresponding conjugate momentum is and it's clear what it is it is just you have to look at del l over del x dot okay and why is it going to be conserved for this reason which we have already seen del l over del x okay del l over del x is zero because there is no l uh, no x here so this guy is conserved and we have already seen what del l over del x dot is it is mx dot so px 
the component of uh, p in the x direction that is conserved but from here also you see that if i took if i look at uh, p y which is del l over del y dot then that guy is not zero uh, that guy is not a constant because you will see that uh, del l over del y from here will get a contribution because of the u okay and you already know that because there is a force uh, which will act on the particle in y and z directions remember the force is a gradient of potential um, the momentum in y and z directions will not be constant but in this case there is no force in the x direction the gradient of u uh, sorry the uh, yeah the the potential is not changing in the x direction so there is no force in the x direction and that is why the component of momentum in x direction is a constant okay so this is what uh, you also expected already in this uh, example let's see a slightly non trivial example only slightly um till now i've been just using cartesian coordinates so let's see uh, uh, an example where i am using generalized coordinates and the simplest one to think of is again that of um, um a free particle let's say confined to a plane xy plane okay and i use polar coordinates and then again we see uh, what we can say here another simple example and because it's example it has to be green okay so again i take a free particle in let's say xy plane and i use the polar coordinates r and theta we already seen it that the kinetic energy is half m r dot square plus r square theta dot square okay so which coordinate is a cyclic coordinate in this case clearly theta is not appearing here so theta is the cyclic coordinate theta dot is there but that's the velocity that's not a coordinate okay so theta is the cyclic coordinate which means del l over del theta is zero okay and you see your r is not a not a cyclic coordinate r appears here so del l over del r is not zero okay good so let's look at the conjugate momentum momentum conjugate to theta and that is del l over del theta dot right let's go back del l over del q alpha dot so your q alpha is theta now so del l over del theta dot and what is that del l over del theta dot so this term is gone gives zero this term will give you half m times r square and theta dot square when you take a derivative gives you 2 theta dot so you get m r square theta dot okay and uh, this is a constant because of your euler lagrange equation so d over dt let me call it p theta okay p theta and your p theta is zero okay or d over dt of m r square theta dot is equal to zero okay we have got another um, uh, not another we have got a constant of motion in this case and i hope you all already recognize this quantity what is m r square theta dot m r square theta dot do you recognize this m r square theta dot is the angular momentum okay the angular momentum of a particle which is not acted upon by any 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 
torque will be constant okay and that is what you see here so this is nice we in this case the the uh, quantities are very familiar but even if let's say we are looking at a system which where which we have very crazy kinds of uh, generalized coordinates all i have to do is first always first start by searching for the coordinates which are cyclic okay you just see which one does not appear in the lagrangian once you have found it you already know that whatever is happening to the system whichever way things are moving around there has to be a corresponding conjugate momentum that will be conserved okay and that's a nice thing to know okay um that's nice okay let's uh, let's make a summary of what we have said and i'll make some observations based on that okay so in the three examples that i have taken i have seen that uh in the example number 1 where we i had a free particle moving in three dimensions i had m px py and pz they were all constants okay and px let me write i wanted to write it this way mx dot um is equal to constant m y dot is equal to a constant m z dot is equal to a constant okay that's what we saw in the first example and then i had a particle uh which was in a potential which didn't depend on x and i saw that m x dot was a constant in that case okay and then we looked at the example of um again a particle in two dimensions but using polar coordinates and we saw that m r square theta dot was a constant okay now note all these equations all these equations that i have written down here m x dot constant m r square theta dot constant they are all first order differential equations okay there is only one time derivative involved theta dot or x dot or y dot or z dot okay and these equations i have not obtained these first order differential equations i have not obtained by solving the system first it's not that i have solved for the system found where uh, how things are evolving with time where how q alpha okay where alpha runs from 1 to whatever degrees of freedom you have i have found the time dependence of q alpha and then found by taking a derivative of this q alpha uh, these equations that's not what i have done what i have done is looked at which coordinates are cyclic and immediately written down uh, these first order differential equations okay and usually these are the things which are much more informative because they immediately tell you something about the system so you are not always very much interested in knowing where each particle is going okay that will be of course useful and you have the full information but that may not necessarily be very uh interesting thing to know what may be more interesting thing to know is for example that the angular momentum is conserved in this case or the momentum is conserved or some such quantities are conserved okay and those you can immediately get and these first order differential equations let me write down these are first order differential equations okay and these first order differential equations are called uh, first integrals of motion okay that's what they are called first integrals of motion and in general if you are looking at a system of s degrees of freedom um 
you would have the first integrals uh, of the following form the first integral of motion will have the form of course it can involve only first order uh, time derivative so it will be some function f okay like here it depends on the coordinate r okay and first uh, time derivative of theta so it would be in general a function of the coordinates let's say the system has s degrees of freedom and then it will involve the first derivatives first order derivatives and possibly time and this will be a constant okay that's uh, where we will stop today and i uh, hope you realize that having first um, integrals of motion is a very useful thing okay you immediately get some good uh, piece of understanding about your system okay we'll continue from here uh, in the next video see you then